Hello to all the chicken people out there in YouTubeopia. I'm Hobby Farm Guy Steve, and next to me is Hobby Farm Guy Brian. Our friend Eric is working hard behind the scenes to help record and produce today's video. And today's video is an important one for chicken people. Today we discuss coccidiosis, a common and sometimes deadly intestinal disease caused by a parasitic organism that attaches itself to a chicken's intestinal lining. One of the most common chicken diseases worldwide, it's estimated that the disease is responsible for over one and a half billion dollars in losses each year in the poultry industry in the U.S. alone. Today we'll review what it is, how to recognize it in your chickens, how to treat it, and what you can do to prevent it from occurring in the first place. Don't go anywhere. All that and more right after the intro, which is a great time to click that like button so that you don't forget. Within the genus Imeria, there are several protozoan parasites. These parasites are found worldwide on both land and water and are responsible for the disease we know as coccidiosis. While these parasites don't infect humans, they will infect dogs, cows, sheep, alpacas, and a whole host of other barnyard animals, including, you guessed it, chickens. They are host specific, so your dogs won't get it from your chickens and your chickens can't catch it from your sheep. But being everywhere, they quietly lie in wait, and at some point, your chickens will be exposed to them if they spend any time on the ground or have access to manure. In the environment, as they lay in wait, they exist as oocysts, which can be thought of as tiny microscopic eggs. These oocysts can lie dormant in the soil for up to a year, and they don't become infectious until they find ideal growing conditions. When they see an opportunity, they undergo a process known as sporulation and become infectious. As chickens scratch and peck at litter or the ground, these infectious microscopic oocysts are ingested and gain access to the chicken. Once ingested, they undergo a process called exostation, whereby thousands of sporozytes are released and invade the epithelial cells of the intestine. This damages the intestinal tract and prevents the host chicken from absorbing vital nutrients. Eventually, they form more oocysts, which are then shed into the chicken's droppings initiating the cycle again. Highest concentrations are usually found in the coop litter and run area, but since they can also be found naturally in the environment, chickens can become infected when they forage in the yard. The most common symptom of the disease is blood or mucus in chicken droppings. Under heavy infections, birds may appear depressed with ruffled feathers. Diarrhea and dehydration may also be present. The skin of the affected chickens may also appear pale in comparison to unaffected birds. Body weight, egg laying, and feed conversion can also be negatively affected. To know for sure, you can provide a sample of fecal material for testing. If you lose a chicken, it can also be taken to the laboratory. An experienced poultry veterinarian can usually diagnose coccidiosis upon visual inspection of the intestines. Coccidiosis often develops quickly with an incubation period of four to eight days. Symptoms may develop gradually or appear suddenly. It's not uncommon for a chicken to seem fine one day and become very sick or even die the next. Fortunately, coccidiosis is treatable if caught early. The most popular treatment is amprolium, which blocks the parasite's ability to uptake and multiply. You'll find this marketed in the liquid form under the brand name Corid. Provided via feed, water, or oral administration, treatment usually proceeds for seven days. And sick chickens often show improvement in as little as 24 hours. Oh, and there's no withdrawal period for eggs. One of the easiest ways to control coccidiosis is to purchase vaccinated birds. Many hatcheries vaccinate chicks against the disease. Once the chicks have developed immunity, they'll be resistant to the strains of coccidia used in the vaccine they receive. However, most backyard chickens are unvaccinated. In unvaccinated flocks, the disease can be managed by keeping parasite levels low. The ingestion of a few parasites here or there isn't a problem. In fact, it actually helps the chickens develop strong immunity against the parasites. That's right. The key is to prevent birds from consuming a large number of parasites at once, which can result in infection. After all, the best way to handle an outbreak of coccidiosis is to prevent one from occurring in the first place. Yeah. And that starts with practicing good biosecurity. Don't wear the same clothing, shoes, or use the same tools and equipment with your chickens that have been used with other activities or on another chicken farm. Also, make sure to quarantine new arrivals. 
house new birds at least 40 feet away from your flock for a minimum of three weeks to allow you to monitor the health of the new bird prior to introducing it to your flock. And if you're starting with or adding chicks, feed them medicated starter feed that exposes them to low levels of at least one strain of coccidiosis to help them to begin to develop a resistance. If you purchase vaccinated chicks, don't use medicated feed as it counteracts the vaccination. Then when the time is right, gradually introduce chicks to a properly maintained chicken yard to help them build a natural immunity to the strains of coccidiosis that are present in your area. Next, keep feeders and waters in the areas around them clean and dry. These areas are hot spots for these parasites to thrive as they generate the right conditions for them to grow. Keeping feed and water off the ground and ensuring they aren't fouled by droppings will help limit exposure to unwanted pathogens. And just like feeding and watering areas, brooders and coops require attention as well. Clean and dry is the rule to remember to discourage the spread of this disease. Soiled, damp bedding provides an ideal environment for coccidiosis parasites to multiply quickly. And part of keeping areas clean and dry means having appropriate stocking densities. Yeah, cramming too many chickens into too small a space results in conditions that encourage coccidiosis. So make sure you're giving your chickens the space they need to keep them happy and healthy. By following these tips, you greatly reduce the chances of coccidiosis becoming an issue in your flock. Stay vigilant and watch for warning signs, and then take quick action if needed to keep those nasty parasites at bay. Again, with appropriate space and a clean environment, chickens typically fare pretty well against these little buggers all on their own. But if the parasites get the upper hand, things can head south quickly. As such, prevention is better than treatment. So that's a quick look at coccidiosis. If you're interested, we've got some other videos covering chicken ailments like mites and lice. You can give those a watch too. And we have more videos planned covering additional chicken diseases and maladies in a little more detail. If you have a request, drop it in the comments and we'll get it added to our list. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on those videos when they come out. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy hobby farming.